the pendency, crores of cases lying. What is the solution to this? More judges, more courts, what should be done? And do it quickly. I remember the first week when you came in and uh, you spoke about this instance where the, you saw a woman who came to you and said, Kuch kijiye, mere paas paise nahi hai. You spoke about this and very evocatively, you know, you said that you want this system to change where the poor have access uh, to, to, uh, to the judiciary. It's not just those who have resources and quick judgments. Uh, like, for example, in this one, he says it's a 40 year a journey towards justice, the 1984 anti-Sikh riots, and nothing has been done. Victims are dead, dying, too old to care anymore. And, uh, you know, such a famous uh, lawyer who says that the judiciary has failed to complete the process. Uh, we, All of us who have seen that as children, the 84 riots, just feel so helpless that nothing has happened what you say is there's a germ of truth in it. And well, what is the problem? What is the essence of the problem? First and foremost, the judge to population ratio in India is amongst the lowest in the world. Yeah. We do not have the number of judges which you require in the district judiciary to handle the kind of volume of caseload which is coming into the district judiciary. So first and foremost, you have to increase the judge to population uh, ratio by appointing more judges. Who will do that? But appointing more judges is not just a, you know, is just not a function of appointing more people, but having more qualified people who come in, which means that you have to identify more qualified people. Second, governments have to invest much more in infrastructure, which is not being done. Third, today, there are about 21% of the posts in the district judiciaries which are lying vacant. 27% is roughly, the 27% the is a vacancy in the staffing pattern of the district judiciary. Now, that is something in a federal polity which is handled by the high courts and by the, uh, by, by the, uh, by, by the public service commissions in certain states. Speaking for myself, I feel that one solution for you know the you know the vacancies in the district judiciary is to have an all india judicial service examination yeah. where the states would recruit but there'll at least be one all india examination yearly which will be held on schedule and the people on that in that uh, order of merit and applying reservations of course as uh, applicable to every state would be selected by the by by the states so we have to find innovative have solutions. Have you uh, recommended this? This has been something which has been, but it will require a constitutional amendment to my mind. Okay. Because, you know, the recruitment and conditions of service of the uh, judges to the district judiciary is controlled by the governors but and obviously in consultation with the... Like you have police reforms, like the, you, have, you need uh, admin reforms. If we are to become a developed nation within a span of time. I don't want to put a number to the number of years. But if we are to do that, don't you feel that oh, it's Oh, absolutely. Imperative. I'm, I'm, it's imperative that we begin. And we have to begin at the base of the pyramid. Oh. And we need these judicial reforms at the base of the pyramid. Okay. We first and foremost need to fill up all positions which are vacant. Huh. Second, and that's something which people don't know, a lot of the delays which occur in the administration of criminal justice is due to reasons for which the judiciary has no control. Hmm. For instance, service of summons and securing the presence of witnesses of the accused is not a function of the courts. Hmm. And a large number of criminal cases remain pending on the docket of courts because the accused are absconding or the witnesses don't appear on the day that the witnesses are supposed to appear. Now, this is not a function of the courts because to secure their presence is not the function of the judge. Who's then? It's obviously the summons are served by the uh, by the by, by the police machinery. So that's where there's a problem. Now a lot of a lot of pendency of cases is just because of the fact that the accused is absconding or that the witnesses don't show up. Now there is still an answer like to that. Like in the eighty four case. Now there is still an answer to it, and that's an area which I had worked on extensively because I was chairing the e committee, which is to employ technology for more efficient uh, yeah. functioning of the criminal justice administration. For instance, video conferencing. It was because of the video conferencing facilities that we had that our courts didn't shut down during COVID during times COVID. Yes. as courts in many other parts of the world uh, shut down. Yeah. Now, we can apply video conferencing, which the new criminal laws uh, do envisage, for recording evidence of witnesses. Uh, 
say a person who has to, um, uh, say an investigating officer who has to give evidence in, in a murder trial or, or in a rape trial. Like in the Yasin Malik case also they right. said. That it can so, come you know, a, a police officer who is transferred by the time that, you know, the evidence has to be given oh. and is transferred to another district, that police officer can give evidence through video conferencing okay. or a medical witness. Say oh. somebody who was recording the di recorded a dying declaration oh. of a woman who was, say, burned for, oh. allegedly burned for dowry. Oh. That medical officer can give evidence through video conferencing instead of having to leave their hospital okay. and to go from one end of, say, Uttar Pradesh or Madhya Pradesh or Rajasthan to another end of the state. So technology can be used in, in very radical ways hmm. to expedite the process. When evidence is recorded, when the witness deposes in a court, the deposition of the witness is transcribed by the judge. The judge will dictate what the witness has said and then that's taken down by a stenographer. Hmm. That can be obviated simply by speech to text uh, okay. transla transcription. Hmm. We have started that in the Supreme Court. In important constitutional cases, hmm. we have speech to text transcription of all the oral arguments. Hmm. We have now a pilot module in place even for the e-courts project which can be implemented in the uh, in, in the yeah, district courts. Hours can be saved per Absolutely. day. Absolutely. So there yes. is a lot that technology can bring in. Now, to give you another example, case categorization. Uh, you know, you have cases which raise the same issue. Huh. Say land acquisition cases. There may be 2,000 cases relating to acquisition under the same notification. Case categorization has enabled us to identify which are those cases. Huh. Once we categorize those cases uh, scientifically, those cases can then be taken up as a bunch of cases for uh, for decision making. Another important area which I'd you like to share. You can use AI in this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you can use AI not for actual decision making, no, but for the, the processual yeah. uh, parts of our court uh, of our court work. Another area, for instance, where uh, you know. Almost 50% of the time of a judge in our district judiciary is spent in, real, in roll calls of cases which will be adjourned because witnesses haven't shown up, huh. because the service on the accused is not complete, or in a civil case, service on all the defendants is not complete. Why should these judges in the district judiciary across the spectrum be made to spend so much of time, fruitless, unproductive time, on these kind of procedural uh, things, which can be easily farmed out to non-judicial personnel hmm. to ensure that the case will actually come to the judge only when it is ripe for... Judgment. For, uh, Instead for, of no, just uh, Ripe for hearing, maybe the hearing. interlocutory okay. hearing or the final hearing. So these structural reforms are hmm. extremely crucial if we have to have, in that sense, a modern judiciary. Is somebody working on them? That's oh, what I want absolutely. to know. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'll just give you an example on, on technology. On, on technology, uh, we have uh, now started e-filing of cases. Huh. Case records are being digitized across India. This has been a radical change. We have a 7,000 crore uh, phase three of the e-courts project, which is being implemented at present. Uh, we send the, the if you would be surprised by the number of uh, emails or the number of uh, text messages which we send, which is unprecedented in any part of the world, uh, in India to litigants. We have ensured that litigants now have knowledge of what exactly is happening in their cases. And this is the case information software, mm. which we have developed as a homegrown software mm. in India. So tremendous amount of work has been done in terms of incorporating technology in the judicial process. Click here to watch the full episode.